What we'd like to do is to show you what the features of the CB stick are. The CB stick is the stick that you handed in and we prepared with the exact environment that you will have during a performance assessment for either PLC1 or DBS1 in this, at the end of this semester. I'll show you, I will, we'll show you what the features are and how you can control the, the, the device it, itself. When you start your CB stick, uh, when you have started your CB stick, you might see this screen in which you have to log in. And um, in this screen in which you have to log in. And uh, what you can do is you can select either assessment user, which would bring you in an environment that's exactly the same as you would have as, as if you were doing a performance assessment, or a CB student in which you have complete control over the stick. You can do whatever you like with it. You can install additional programs if you like. Um, and then you can play with uh, Linux uh, in, in a way that you uh, prefer, whatever you like to do. You can even uh, turn on Wi-Fi or networking if your uh, adapter is supported. And that, uh, that is, of course, very nice to have. Uh, let's uh, log in as a CB student first, because that is typically the screen that starts up even without logging in. Then you get uh, an environment that looks like this. Uh, you see in the background uh, a picture of uh, some time ago of the Fontes uh, premises the campus and you see uh, on the bottom you see a small uh, uh, menu or a dock if you want to call it a dock then it's a dock and at the top right hand, left hand corner you have uh, also a menu with this tiny button in which you have all kind of settings if you want to investigate uh, these then uh, you are also free to do that what we did we added is a python script uh, that Fontis provides to make it possible to log into a Fontis network or even, that's, uh, that's better still, um, uh, your uh, EduRoom uh, um, network because um, it, that is what it, this allows. So if you have a Wi-Fi connection uh, as, a, as I do, then you can attach to it uh, using this, uh, this script. Uh, you also see that at the top, uh, right hand side you have a few buttons the, those two last ones are important when you do an assessment because you have to sh orderly shut down your stick we'll do that in uh, at the end of this session too uh, there's a shutdown but also a switch user and the, the last one I will use and the other interesting button is this button that shows now the American flag that's not because we like Americans so much but because it stands for the English keyboard layout or rather the American keyboard layout if you click on it, you can select different other keyboard lay layouts. We selected German because it's quite popular in our courses, but also Bulgarian and Romanian because some students have brought their uh, devices from, uh, from their country of origin. So if you click on it, uh, the, the flag will change. So now I've selected a keyboard layout. I will change it back to what I liked. Or you could change it to do Bulgarian. That is uh, the Bulgarian flag and this is the Romanian flag. But uh, I'll simply switch back to um, the uh, US uh, keyboard layout because that is what I'm used to. The application that you uh, want to use typically are um, NetBeans for PSC1, DBeaver for the DBS1 uh, uh, assessments, and you might want to use a browser, uh, either uh, Google Chrome or Firefox, whichever you like best, that is uh, up to your pre preference. And if you start with either one of these, you might get a pop-up for a password. A password that has been set uh, by us because this is how the modern security works you must set a password and also i'll i will um, set uh, activate this and here you see that it wants to unlock a default key ring and the key ring is a feature of the desktop not so much of uh, uh, google chrome but it wants to uh, use that key ring to secure some of its stuff and we enabled a password and we simply set it to two axes uh, two axes so type two axes here and then you are done then you uh, the keyboard is unlocked uh, in this case I might be able to go to the uh, uh, internet and indeed I can because I have a network connection but what we want to show you also is that the documentation during the exam is also available on the stick so this is a local resource. This is the document, full documentation of Postgres 13.1. That is the version that is installed on the stick. And also about uh, the JDK of uh, Java 11 that is provided on the stick. And also of Java VIX because that might be part of your assessment. So we'll, um, we'll, um, we provide this information on your stick so you, that you can browse through the documentation if you forgot a few things. And it's also best to know how to work with this 
the nice thing about uh, the modern uh, Java doc documentation is that you can search. For instance, if you want to know things, uh, methods that uh, String provides, you could look up uh, the String class and then have a look at the, at the methods that uh, it provides. Um, so that is uh, what you what you find uh, using the browser. Uh, no, that, those are the most important parts. Of course, you can use the browser to browse through your file system, but it, that will take you uh, a lot of time and uh, it's not very well advised. You will see that other than uh, some icons for the home directory, a trash can and this uh, Python script to attach to the Wi-Fi network, there's nothing much to see on the CB student uh, uh, desktop because, well, that is uh, for you to fill in how, how you want to do, use that. If you want to get the experience of what you will have available to you on uh, during a performance assessment, you have to switch user and you do that by clicking the gray button and then you simply log out. And then you log in again uh, and then instead of uh, CB student, you go to assessment user. And again, there's no password. Also in the ex exam, there will be no password for logging in onto to the desktop, but there is a password for the for the key ring, the, the same XX as we, uh, we you saw before. And now for some reason, um, I see that uh, I lose my desktop icons and that is not too bad. Um, what you can expect is on the bottom, you would have will have the same um, dock with the uh, applications. But you can't see them now uh, because I have a two screen set up and uh, obviously that, uh, that menu is on a different screen. Maybe I can uh, rearrange that. Let me try that so that we can see uh, all see the same thing. So I'll turn it into a, um, a different desktop setting. No, that's not the one I want. What I want to do is make sure that we see the same. Display setting would be the same for both, and that should be 9020, and they should mirror and then apply. And I'll shortly have a change of, um, of configuration, it's still not to my liking. I want the maximum resolution on both displays, yes, on both displays because, well, that is the way it will work uh, in the performance assessment. And now you see what, uh, what you will, would have seen on a single screen. So it is the same environment, the same dock, the same arrangement on the dock. There's a terminal, uh, there's a uh, calculator. If you need the calculator, we uh, provided that because sometimes, well, you are in a hurry and you want to compute something uh, without writing a program. There's a calculator for you. Uh, you can put it into a basic mode and it becomes a very simple calculator. Again, the same applications, uh, Google Chrome, Firefox, browser, DBiva, and my, uh, sorry, uh, SQL, not that either, <laughs> that means IDE. Um, and, and what you also will see in the exam directory, when you logged in as, a, as an exam user, uh, that you have two project folders, uh, one with an exam project for DBS1, which obviously contains uh, an exercise for DBS1, and also um, uh, an example folder which contains four projects that could be used in your uh, performance ass assessment. Typically over the years we had four uh, small projects uh, in the exam, uh, gradually increasing in complexity, and we'll see that, uh, see that too. I'll show uh, how that works uh, with NetBeans. If you uh, open NetBeans by clicking on it and waiting a bit, that depends on the speed of your USB uh, connection <coughs> then you get um, uh, NetBeans and you see that I already opened these projects uh, if they are not open yet then uh, you can simply close them uh, be, I'll show that because you must be able to find your projects what you need to do here is click on the open projects uh, folder and then go to the directory where they live and that is on the desktop in exam project PLC1 you will find your uh, assessments your assessment stuff uh, so uh, what we can do then is simply click on these files, sorry, on these projects and open the projects. You can also select just one project, but I'll simply uh, use all of them. What you do then is um, uh, run uh, the tests. That's typically what you do. If you have a performance assessment, you don't want to know what is being tested in your program. 
So that's simply the first thing that you do. You select your project and press on this test button. Not on the run button, but on the test button. These icons have the same um, meaning as the uh, icon icons in the MOOC, but um, they work a bit different and they also have a different position because they, I think that the first thing you should do with the program is test it. And after that, if it is okay, then you could run it. So let's simply test this project and you'll see what, what happens. You see here the output of the Maven build tool. Um, but more interest, interestingly, you, if you enable the test results and then run the uh, test again, so simply click again on the test button, then it should show the test output. And this is the interesting uh, view. If you click on, the, on uh, such a, a failing test, then you can see what is wrong. For instance, here, uh, in this in this class, you need a method that uh, that is called read books with a string, and that um, that method is obviously missing. So that is this this uh, this project. If I'll uh, open another project, that is the last one, you'll also see that we do something with Java VIX uh, in uh, performance assessment. And again, if I do, if I select the project and then do test the project, then again you will see what uh, the testing is all about, what the testing tests. And if it works as it is, then you will see that there are some outputs here. And again, first test, uh, uh, select the test results, then run your tests. And you always get, will get this output, which is a bit verbose, but... And then you get your, uh, your output and you see that there's one, just one uh, test currently enabled. Because it might be that once you implement some feature, new tests will be available to you for the simple reason that uh, the tests depend on, may depend on features that you, that you implement. You also saw shortly uh, some other window pop up. That is actually the application that you will build, be building here. That's a vocabulary practice application. Uh, actually, it's an implementation of one of the exercises uh, in the MOOC. The name is similar as all, all these exercises are um, de derived from the MOOC. The only difference with this uh, exercise that this exercise has real tests, where the original exercise has little, little, little if any, tests. Now, assume that you have completed your uh, exam. What you need to do is first uh, close down uh, NetBeans by simply clicking on the cross and then uh, exit. Uh, do not bother too much about what uh, what uh, what it says, and then you need to uh, to shut down the system to make sure that everything that you did during your exam is indeed written to your exam stick, because when you worked in an exam, your exam sticks will be harvested, will be collected by us, and then we will read the files back from your stick, and then um, then we'll uh, correct those uh, exercises, the work that you did. So uh, make sure that you use the shutdown button, button properly and do not simply unplug the stick because that is very bad. It'll, you might lose the, your whole work and it might even be that we can't read the stick anymore because you might damage the file system. Not the stick itself physically, but you might fire, uh, damage the file system. So what you do, need to do is uh, click on the shutdown, the red shutdown button, and then uh, confirm that by again pressing here shutdown. And then what you will get is a black screen we're in a circle which uh, runs around a bit and it uh, it ends by putting at the bottom of the screen this uh, this text that you can see it over here uh, please remove uh, the installation medium and uh, then press enter and that's what I will do and once uh, so what I'll do I'll uh, remove the installation medium and then press enter and then the machine shuts down and in my setup uh, you will not see that because then the video shuts down but uh, that is that is exact actually uh, really important that you make sure that you shut down your stick properly so that once you uh, collect it from your uh, machine you can hand it in to the uh, proctor and we can then correct your exercises. I thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy uh, using the stick and uh, have a good uh, time uh, practicing your exercises on it. You could even uh, run it uh, complete with. Um, uh, with MOOC exercises. You could uh, uh, in install TMC Beans on it and work on, uh, on this uh, with, your, uh, with your own computer. This is uh, the experience, then you will have the experience that you will have during the exam. Thank you for your attention and I hope to see you uh, this week again. Bye bye.